Ladies and gentlemen, what a short, strange trip it has been. This is the To Be Determined show right here for the very last time on TNT-radio.net. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it does not end with a whimper, but with a bang. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. Let's just cut right to it. Former NWA Women's World Champion and the resident badass of the bunch, Tasha Simone. Champ, how you doing tonight? I am doing just Peachy, peachy, peachy. Assassin's Creed 3 is the effing bomb. I just want everybody to know if you don't already have the game, go fucking get it right now. While you're listening to us, keep your headphones on, but go get the game. Now, I'm not going to start yet because we have to introduce everybody, but I just want everybody to know since this is the last night on TNT-radio.net, you're going to hear why I am... So, so known for being controversial before this show is super. I think that's what I think this is going to be a straight shooting type of night. Bang, bang. Ladies, and ladies and gentlemen, coming straight out of Compton, crazy motherfucker named Ice Cube. Well, the game with it called Attitude. It is the Magic City Motor <laughs> Mouth, the man that has spent more than half his life in titty bars <laughs> making money, making money, making money. From the full Didn't range tell me Will Owens was vault. here. <laughs> From the full range entertainment vault, <laughs> live in Birmingham, Alabama. He is the Magic City Motor Mouth. Fast Eddie Lane. Mr. Lane, how you doing tonight? Any similarity between the Magic City Motor Mouth, Fast Eddie Lane, and a nice person is purely coincidental and strictly fictional. And if anybody in the audience tonight is easily offended, please uh-huh. raise your hand. Because your ass just became a target. <laughs> Because we can see you through the radio at all, you know. I see and everything. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I just realized my webcam isn't on, so you didn't see me raise my hand. Shit. Oh, that's you great. never know what's on. And, and you just heard him right there. A little under the weather, but since this is, you know, part of his conception as well as mine and Tasha's, uh, he has graciously joined us tonight, as I said, under the weather. He is the man who, who single-handedly held this this radio station together with duct tape and butternuts. He is Mad Dog Matt Denton. Matt? Sup, people? I'm That's sorry. I, I, sound like, Sup, I sound like Adam people. West for a second. Matt? It's my Adam West for the <laughs> night. I do apologize. But, uh, yes, lady, we're just going to let everybody know right off the bat. Uh, this is the final night. This is the final broadcast of TNT-radio.net. I don't know if it, or I don't know if we're playing any replays or whatever. We may not. You know, uh, replays? As soon as this is, we're not PW. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we have been. Huh? So we have been. <laughs> Eddie's been doing the replays for us. So uh, just to let everybody know, the we'll radio see. station's uh, website is running out, and we are not going to renew it. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and tell everybody how to. It, you know, this radio station was brought together kind of on a whim. Uh, as everybody has heard on my YouTube page, because it has a lot of views, uh, the Meltdown edition of, uh, as it was called back then, to be determined. Uh, Joey Image was actually sticking up for Matt Denton. Matt Denton had been, quote unquote, suspended. By Nick Anthony, formerly of... No, 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 no. Full-on fired. Fired. Oh, fired. I'm sorry, fired. And uh, Matt ran the soundboard for us, and Matt was... Okay, when I was brought into PW24-7, and Eddie knows this, Beyond Rings, I used to do a Wednesday night show. Uh, I actually went from Wednesday night, and I was the guest on what was called Shoot Finish back then. Uh, Mark James, just on a shoot, just quit the station live on air and told everybody that he felt like he was smartening... (laughs) The uh, the marks up too much, and you know what? They may have been. I don't know. I'd only listened to the show a few times, and I was asked right then and there, put on the spot to join the cast of Shoot Finish. Of course, I'm not going to say no. So I was like, uh, yeah, I don't know any of you guys, but sure, you know. Uh, Greg Raglan, Shoot Finish was his baby. Uh, did Stan Grubb start it with him, or was it just uh, Greg by himself, Matt? Uh, Stan wasn't part of Shoot Finish. Stan was part of Wrestle Rage. Wrestle Rage. I knew I knew he was part of Wrestle Rage, but I thought maybe he had started. Anyways, we're gonna say it was I think, Greg. I, th- I think the original cast of Shoot Finish was Greg, Mark James, and Bambi, Bambi Welch. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, and then uh, and then Joey was added to that, and then you were kind of an on and off. I know you ran the boards, and Nick ran the board at times. Uh, Don't anyway. say his name, please, God. Well, I'd you rather know. hear Joey Image ringing in my head <laughs> over and over what? and over again than Nick Anthony's fucking name ever again. Well, anyways, anyways, <laughs> so uh, it comes to Don't be, hold back. <laughs> it, 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 it came to be, if you will, that Joey had a meltdown live on air sticking up for Matt being fired by Nick. Uh, Joey totally went about it the wrong way. And pulled the plug live on air, start screaming on air. Uh, you can check out my YouTube Wicked Nemesis uh, to check that out uh, from May, I believe is when it was, May 29th or something like that. I'm not real sure. Uh, and from that, that next day, I was contacted by, I think it was Grubby, and told me that there was a new station coming about. Well, I got with Tasha and I got with them because you know, we had just, we'd only had like two or three weeks of uh, To Be Determined before everything was shut down. Well, <laughs> We changed it to the To Be Determined show, you know, to kind of keep what we were going with, but give it a little bit. That way, you know, there was, you know, a, a little bit here and there. Joey the whole, was, Joey was sorry, apeshit. Yeah, sorry. he went apeshit. But the whole thing was that that night, I got fired from PW because I told Nick he was a stupid motherfucker. Which he Nick may have like, been. Yes, he was. No, he still is a stupid motherfucker. And um, so I was invited to be, I guess, a guest on D2 Be Determined Show, despite the fact that I w at that time I was a co-host. Because I'd been fired, I was a guest. So I was there. Of Tasha. And I Tasha. Tasha invited you, I invited you, but Joey invited you. But Tasha refused to do the show without you. Right. And we all agreed. And that night, I, w I wasn't sh on Nick. I was just there being just as quiet as I usually am. And Nick's like, well, I don't like the fact that he's on my station now, so I'm going to kick him off. And after a few kicks, Joey just went apeshit. After like four or five kicks, because I had no idea yeah. what was going on. You can hear it live as it happens, because you can hear I, my, I start trailing off. I mean, I do trail off, but uh, I was really kind of, because I could see something going on. Matt coming on and coming off, and it was Nick. On Matt's end, he was taking control of the board or whatever, and, and then Joey just pulls the plug on the show, which is what uh, I had a problem with. And he just starts screaming, and that's how it ended. And yeah. So the next day we started that. Uh, the and then later show. that night, sorry, sorry, Wicked. Yeah. We're um, later that night, it was me, Joey, Stan, who were trying to just um, make it known what happened. And right then and there, I was oh, like, yeah. "Why don't we just move everything over to our own station?" Because I think about maybe six hours after the whole sh shit went down, Nick was like, I quit PW 24 7. I'll surrender everything to Stan, blah, 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 blah. And PW 24 7 at that time was dead and buried. But we decided, fuck PW 24 7. We're going to create our own sh uh, station with blackjack and hookers. And that's how TNT was born. Sorry, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Blackjack yeah. And <laughs> but this is stupid. Uh, but you know, I, I got the call <clears throat> or text actually, and then I ended up talking to Grubby. I remember that uh, we started up the next week, and it was the To Be Determined show. Now everybody want to know what happened with Joey. Let's just completely throw it out. Okay, my birthday was October twenty fourth. Matt two or three times played birthday songs. You know, mess with me here and there. Not a single time did Joey. Now Joey, Joey hammered. For attention, he always wanted us to talk. Like if we didn't talk, well, nobody got in contact with me during the week. We're like, okay, that's cool. You know, just calm down. It's it's quite all right. Uh, nobody tried to get any guests on the show besides me and Tasha. Nobody, nobody tried to get any shows on. So when we and Joey didn't guests, appreciate that. No, no. In fact, he told us. He told me that people would. Re now the straw that kind of broke the camel's back was uh, Tasha had, I believe, Wolfie lined up at the time, didn't you? Yeah, you had Wolfie lined up. I think it was Wolfie, yeah. And then all of a sudden, he said, well, we shouldn't have any guests this week. I don't know about y'all, but I'm sure that a lot of people would rather hear uh, somebody like Wolfie D talk than us just bitch and moan and complain about things and try to educate. Somebody that has been in the business, somebody did something. Well, it totally got changed around. That week, Joey ended up getting uh, one of his friends to call in, somebody that he was starting an angle with, quote-unquote, which he occasionally did. 
Uh, over the summer when everything was going on, when it took him 20 minutes to tell about the show or to talk his story or whatever, about going to get his wallet and forgetting his things, I was like, that's 20 minutes we could have spent on some of those. With all the wrestling going on, I know right now we're taking away from talking about wrestling, but you know we're just kind of letting everybody know why the station goes before we start talking about wrestling. Uh, with that being said, one thing after another led up to him just bitching about everything. He would just he would just constantly say something here, say something there. Uh, he would talk about his his events that he never would end up working, and then he would harass sexually harass uh, a lot of our listeners, and we started losing some of our listeners. And we were wondering, and Matt and I were talking about well, something's got to be on because you know we're still doing the funny, you know we're still talking about wrestling. Uh, Tosh is definitely bringing in the NWA, but there was something about it. Well, come to find out. Joey was doing shit here and there, sending dick pics, you know, wanting to fuck pastries, et cetera, whatever. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and and he and – after my birthday, he didn't even acknowledge the birthday. He didn't say anything, you know. And he never I acknowledged like, my birthday either, by the way, so fuck him. So, I mean, you oh, know, we oh, were kind of oh, – Sorry. <clears throat> sorry. Just on the uh, note of a birthday thing, Joey was the only person who at the time was running the TBD show account on Twitter. Yeah. So and he would out. be like, he would be like, oh, today's today's Joey Image's birthday, yay! Go follow him, go he follow Joey for put Follow Friday, over. exactly. Yeah, he, yeah, and then there was some. He was supposed to come over to the UK for a couple of um, uh, shows, and apparently they got cancelled. So he used the TBD show account to harass the promoter's wife, and ask them why they didn't like Joey anymore, and why they weren't bringing him over. So with that being said, uh, the Friday after my birthday, I was going to get a vasectomy. Not once heard anything about it. All of a sudden, it's CM Punk's birthday. Like, oh, CM Punk. And Joey Image is one of the main people. Constantly talking about CM Punk's birthday. I said, you didn't even mention my birthday. And you know what? I had just had enough. Now, me being a heel, I knew I could take the heat of just going off on him. And saying what I wanted to about him, stuff I had been wanting to say because uh, I had bit my tongue several times. Uh, he let it be known whenever we had uh, uh, who do we have? We had Damon. We had Damon Christopher on, and I'm wanting to say uh, O'Hagan or somebody. We were interviewing them, and then he said he wanted to wrap the wrap it up. We got 20 minutes. Let's take some of that time to talk about ourselves. He had no events for that week. No events for that week. But yeah, he wanted to talk about himself. Why? So, with that being said, I told Stan right then and there that I had a problem with it because he was like, well, we didn't know we were having a guest. No, everybody knew you were having a guest. You were the one person who didn't know that we were having a guest. So, for whatever reason, it happened. Well, I took it upon myself to go crazy on Joey and tell him what I thought about it. I told him that you know he was a mark. Of, I kind of watched his ass. I didn't really protect him completely when the shit went out with Jessica Havoc. Uh, for those who don't know, he has a kayfabe on his license plate. The whole point of fucking kayfabe is just not to say that it's there. So you're riding around with kayfabe on on your car. So one thing after another, uh, it started coming out that he was harassing some of our listeners. Some of the listeners didn't want to uh, listen anymore because they were turned off by him. And really, who wants to sit here? And then the night that he showed up – now, this was kind of what started the downfall – was the night he showed up on pills. Uh, he had no reason yes. to be doing the show. No reason. And then to take 10 or, min 10 or 15 minutes to talk about everything he was on. Why? Why talk about that? So Grubby ended up leaving T – actually, Kid left TNT uh, to because he's working his ass off in college. Uh, mm -hmm. With that being said, also, Stan left. So there was just us and Angel were sending one to maneuver. Uh Matt, you picked somebody, or somebody said that they could work the board for you. I'm not sure. On this this, 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 um, this actually, Stan was the person who introduced me to a guy called Walter. You may know him as the Real Smooth G on Twitter, and said that he has the the technology to run the board. So, at this time, I was uh, preparing to move into my new job, and I de desperately needed somebody to take over production duties, and. After running Walter through everything that needed to be done, I handed over the reins of the Thursday show, through Way Fire and Ice, to him. The first week, he sends me a DM saying, oh, um, hold on a minute, let me, let me actually find it so I, I'm accurate. 
Okay, no, it's not there anymore. But anyway, um, he said that Sam crapped out on him tonight and he needed to download something to fix it, blah, 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 blah. So I'm like, okay, first, first aid nerves kind of thing. We'll sort it out. The next week, uh, there was no show. I don't know whether um, there was technical difficulties or Walter d- just didn't show up. But I woke up to find on Twitter the next day that Angel Orsini had put on Twitter, we would like to wish TNT Radio all the best in their future endeavors. Oh, actually, Angel, Angel did quit not show Amber. up to produce the fucking show. Amber and was let's just put that. it this way. I've spent the past, uh, up until that point, I spent the last year. And only modern technology can prevent Matt Ditton from saying exactly what he wanted to say right then and there. Wicked, back to you. That was, you know what I think? <laughs> I think that, uh. Think that somebody has something to do with that. That was kind of fishy. But uh, <laughs> as Matt was saying, he woke up to a tweet from Andrew Orsini saying, "You know, wish TNT this radio and the dot net, whatever, and the, uh, best in their future endeavors." Which uh, I understand. But uh, with that being said, you know, it, w- it was time. Matt couldn't do the sh- couldn't do the boards anymore. We were able to do uh, this show for the simple fact that we had Eddie here. Eddie come on, and with Eddie. Being able to do the board for us, then, uh, you know, it, it helped out tremendously. But also, uh, you know, what a maneuver wasn't able, what a maneuver didn't have a soundboard uh, after they moved to Sunday nights. Three way fire and ice not having it, but it was time for the station to go. So, uh, with that being said, you know, we, we appreciate everything that, everybody, that everybody's done. We appreciate everybody coming on. We appreciate everything that's happened. But, you know, uh, it was time, plain and simple. Eddie, your thoughts on this since you come in you know, here towards the end and helped us out tremendously, which we appreciate. Well, first off, I would like to thank you all for putting up with me because it's been an honor to carry what I've been able to this far. And just knowing the fact that we're going to be able to continue this over on BR. And I'm going to go ahead and um, I said it in the chat room, and we've discussed this off air. Um. The show in and of itself will maintain the integrity that it has worked to build. Wicked is still going to be wicked. Tasha's still going to be Tasha. When Matt's able to call in, he's still going to be Matt. And Smart Rage is going to be Smart Rage. Um, Those who know that BR is um, Beyond Ringside itself is normally an all ages appropriate or PG rated show. Um, You know, this show in and of itself is its own entity. And I've really enjoyed being a part of it all the way to this point. And I still say. Uh, the roller coaster ride is going to continue to climb that hill, and we're going to have some fun all the way across the board. But uh, more than anything else, I just want to say thank you to Wicked, brother. You're, you're tremendous. Uh, Tasha, I appreciate you. Matt, I know you can hear me. Skype, got to love it. <laughs> and Smart Rage, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. In the business, in the business, in the business, in the business. Now go get drunk. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> the new drinking game. I love it. I just made his ass do four shots. <laughs> Wick. Tasha, your thoughts on this, ma'am, if you will. Uh, with everything being said, with TNT, like I said, the to be determined show actually going to be on ringside.com. But, ma'am. Wow. I guess I'm going to have to learn to control my mouth a little bit more. No, you're not. I guess that's my New Year's. Guess that's my New Year's resolution. Not Eddie's going to have to have a beep. No. Um, no. Hold honestly, on. seriously, regardless of what station, so to speak, we're on, what internet station, it's still going to be the same show. We're still going to educate people about professional wrestling. We're still going to cut up and have fun. Um, when Matt comes to visit, he's still going to say kind every once in a while, just of course. because I like hearing him say it. Um, if Joey Image's name is ever brought up, I'm going to be pissed because I didn't get my homemade ravioli, and then we're all going to throw up in our mouths thinking about Joey Image. Um, the goals I kind of understand as far as Amber and Angel, you know, saying they didn't want to be a part of it. Not sure they really handled it the right way, but, you know, hey, it's wrestlers. We all do stupid stuff sometimes. But this is not the end, 
and I work with a great bunch of people, and hopefully Matt's job will allow him to be on more frequently than just once a year. Let's hope so. Matt, are you back? He's, I don't think Matt he's working on it. <laughs> Matt, All right. Matt's, there he oh, is. There we go. Yeah. This is my new laptop, which is not working as well as I hoped it would be. So I don't Your know exactly. new laptop exact- is stacking. Yes, it is. So now I've just moved over to my main rig, so hopefully everything will be smooth from now on. I don't know where I actually lost you guys, though. As soon as you were talking about... He's uh, not fooling the- me. He, he was playing Assassin's Creed. He is not fooling me at all. I finished Assassin's Creed about a month ago. Oh, well, you suck. Yeah, and you didn't Tosh, you, you, you didn't send Tasha the cheat codes. <laughs> there are I no don't cheat want codes, the cheat codes. There's always no, that is an awesome game though, for real. That is awesome. I'm not into video games like my kids are, but damn, I love that game. Hold on, there have been cheat codes ever since Donkey Kong, Pac Man, and Dragon's Lair. So don't tell me there's not cheat codes for Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Actually, most games don't have cheat codes anymore. Not since the advent of achievements. Because cheat codes negate achievements. Well, that takes half the fun out of it. Up, down, left, left, X, Y, Y. <laughs> Triangle, star sign. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. A BA start. Konami code, motherfuckers. Anyway, so wh- and- where did I actually lose you guys? The last I heard was Angel or Amber tweeting best wishes or best endeavors endeavors or whatever. Yeah, so basically because of um, Walter's fuck up, about a year and a half worth of, it's actually gone up to a year and a half now, to um, of trust, building trust between me, Angel, Amber, and the station, just gone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well done. And I'm very disappointed. I, I, I'm actually. I guess I'm a little bit more disappointed that Angel and Amber weren't able to come directly to me, and we could sort this all out. They were just like, "Okay, this is un, uh, unprofessional. We quit." I understand that they were frustrated, but still. But you know what? From all good things, something must come. So we do appreciate everybody that's listening. We do appreciate Amber and Angel as well. But ladies and gentlemen, we're about to take our first commercial break of the evening right here on TNT-radio.net. When we come back, we'll be talking to our guest, GCW's color commentator, Ted Dennis, right here (laughs) on the To Be Determined Show. What? Teddy Ruxpin's going to be with us tonight? And you realize I've got to do this. The music plays, the microphones go hot, and we are live on a Wednesday this is night. Ring side. Shut up. Blow me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the To Be Determined Show on TNT-Radio.net. And now, the man whose mohawk stands higher than Ron Jeremy could ever hope to. Back to the Wicked Nemesis. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and tonight our <laughs> guest right here, our final guest on TNT-Radio.net, the To Be Determined show, is a man that knows a lot about Eddie and vice versa. This is the cohort to Eddie Lane on GCW Radio and GCW TV, the one the only, Ted Guinness. Ted, how you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing good. Uh, let me just say it's an honor to be the last guest on the To Be Determined show on TNT-Radio.net. There's a lot of pressure. You're either going to go out with a bang or down in flames. So you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try to, you know, try to send you out with a with a bang. Now, now, really quick, Tasha likes to refer to you affectionately as something. Tasha, what do you call it, Teddy? Teddy Ruxpin. I saw you on the Walmart shelf at Christmas, too. I bet you didn't know they brought you back. No, I, c- I could have used some of the royalties. But, hey, I've been called worse in my life, so I, you know, I can handle Teddy Ruxpin. Can you and I be Teddy friends? Teddy Ruxpin is the bomb. <laughs> man, I always man. wanted to stick a Metallica 
cassette inside of one of those things and see if Teddy Ruxpin would, would mouth the words to Master of Puppets. That's, I always wanted to do that. Ooh. Matt, did you have a Teddy Ruxpin when you were a little kid? <laughs> no. I no, I did not. Are you sure? Well, yeah, I took enough abuse uh, from it as a kid. I didn't want to have one of them in my house. And and that quick, the show goes awry. Uh, <laughs> we have so we know Matt didn't have Matt Denton did not have one because he's only like twenty one years old, and Teddy Rupp's twenty three. And hey, somebody could have gone to a second hand store. Damn it! Are you shitting me? Those are probably worth a lot of money on they eBay are. right now. Right now. Air sign, or I'm sorry, Night Air, as he's known on Twitter now, is probably going right now in his in his neighborhood because it's casual in his neighborhood. <laughs> Looking at right now, Teddy Rupskin, he's probably going to have one. But Ted, let's for those that don't know, let's go all the way back to when you were a mere cub, all the way God. back. How <laughs> did you get into the great business of professional wrestling? And first of all, why did you want to get into the business of professional wrestling? Um. Well. I actually, I started watching wrestling uh, with a friend of mine way back, uh, late '80s. Way um, back. I really started getting into it. Uh, I think the first, the first exposure that I had to wrestling was the Saturday Night's Main Event, where Hogan and Savage did the uh, did the split with Elizabeth and the lust in the eye and everything. Uh, and after that, I was hooked. And you know, anytime uh, my friend and I weren't playing baseball, we were watching. Uh, either WWF tapes or WCW tapes. Uh, at, at I guess it was WCW at the time, um, and just you know, always, always just had a an interest in it. And um, when I was nineteen, I decided that I was going to try to get into the ring and uh, train, and that's where I ended up with um, you know. And I hate to give him any any credit for my career, so I'll just say the guy who runs APW out in California, uh, the Beyond the Mat guy. Um, but I only trained there for about a month. I didn't like, I I didn't like anything about his school. I didn't like him personally. Uh, he struck me as a used car salesman. So it kind of, you know, I, I kind of got out of the business of wanting to be in wrestling for quite a long time. Um, got back into wrestling, uh, watching it with the NWO and the Monday night wars and everything. And then when we moved here from California, uh, I think it was a year after we moved out here, um, was looking at the newspaper and saw that uh, WWE was opening up uh, deep South wrestling and developmental school. Um, and at the time I had been trying to break into uh, some sort of radio broadcasting out here. Um, but I, you know, I discovered that, you know, it's, it's pretty much a good old boys network, uh, especially down in, in middle Georgia. So wasn't able to get any broadcasting opportunities. Um, so I started going to Deep South and just accidentally asked the right person the right question at the right time. And after after the sixth show that they ran, they brought me backstage and I met with Jody Hamilton. Um, and I told him, look, you know, I, I would like to get an opportunity to try to, you know, do play by play in her TV or ring announcer pretty much anything. You know, I, I'm a broadcaster. Well, they already had two ring announcers at the time and they were trying out Nigel Sherrod uh, to be the voice of Deep South Wrestling. So they let me be a cameraman for a while. Um, one of the ring announcers left like within a couple weeks after I got there. So it was just um, Dan Masters who was doing the ring announcing, which, uh, you know, whatever, if you know Dan Masters or not, you know, great. I don't personally think he's a very good ring announcer. He may be a great radio personality or whatever, uh, but I didn't think he was a very good ring announcer. And uh, Jody called me back. Uh, it was the last match before intermission one night. He called me back and he said, look, I'm going to give you one opportunity to go out there and ring an ounce a match. And you know, I was all geeked up. Hey, cool. It's great. Get in the ring and launch into what has been called one of the best Howard Finkel impersonations ever and introduce the match. And then, you know, after the show, the next week, they said, look, you're going to do ring an ounce the dark matches from now on. Dan's going to ring an ounce the TV show. And it went like that for about a month or two. Um, and Dan either left on his own or he was fired, um, depending on who you ask. And uh, ever since then, I was the full-time ring announcer for both Dark Matches and their TV show. And I, I was uh, the ring announcer throughout the entire run. Um, so, you know, that's you have, to, you have to look at it this way. There are millions of professional wrestling fans that would love to have an opportunity to work even in an independent 
my first exposure to professional wrestling was in a WWE developmental territory. So yeah, that that's something that I'll always take away and say, you know, that's that's just cool because it's like one one millionth of one percent of, of the people that like wrestling would have the opportunity that I had. So you know, that's one thing that happens to uh to be you had that one shot and then you automatically took it and ran with it. So I mean that's what you need to do. But how did you make the transition to uh, GCW out of Birmingham? Um, well, flash forward eight years later or seven years later, um, I had done a couple of shows for Bill DeMott. He was uh, trying to start up his own wrestling school promotion called New Energy Wrestling, um, which bombed in a big way. And uh, Micah Taylor, who I had known from uh, Deep South Wrestling, um, had started his own school. So one day I was driving around and I was, called Micah. I said, look, man, you know, I've been hearing about your school. Just want to come down, check it out or whatever. And, you know, he asked if I was a stooge for Bill and I said, no. Uh, so he let me come down to the school and I uh, checked it out uh, for a couple, couple times, went in there and uh, he suggested that I get in the ring and try it out. So I actually got in the ring and trained to wrestle uh, for close to a year. And during that time, it was uh, the, it was the last show in January of this year, uh, they were all, you know, all the guys were heading down to Pell City, and I asked if I could tag along, you know, help out wherever I could, you know, tape the underground matches. Uh, at the time, it wasn't the underground, but, you know, videotape the matches or just hang out and, and just see what GCW was because I had heard so much about, you know, GCW and Mad Dog Dan Sawyer. I wanted to go check it out for myself. So I went down uh, with the guys and, um, you know, I didn't really you know, shake a lot of hands and, and glad hand everybody. You know, I, I talked to Jeff McGowan, who I had known uh, for years, and, you know, a couple of the other guys. And then when the show started, I went up into the uh, the crow's nest and was just videotaping a few matches. Intermission rolls around, and I forgot who it was. I don't know if it was Mad Dog. I don't know if it was uh, Eddie. I don't know if it was my. I can't remember who it was. But someone pulled me aside and said, hey, how would you like to do play-by-play or uh, commentary for the last two matches? And I'm okay. You know, and keep in mind, I'm not dressed to be behind a microphone. I'm not wearing a suit or anything. You know, I'm jeans and a beat up shirt or something. Um, and so they grab me and they introduce me to Eddie literally 15 seconds before we go out there. And uh, we go out there and the first match that I get to call with Eddie is a triple threat uh, table chairs match. It was supposed to be a TLC, but the uh, the latter part got canceled. I guess because of the athletic commission or something. We didn't have barricades. Fire marshal. Um, what's that? Fire marshal. The fire marshal. So you know, the the latter march was pulled. The latter match part was pulled out. But um, you know, and if you go back and listen, I think it's season three, episode six. It's either five or six. I can't remember on Blip TV. You can hear the first, oh, I don't know, two, three minutes. Uh, I had I had a hard time getting into uh, broadcasting because I hadn't done play-by-play in quite a long time. It had just both, uh, mostly been ring announcing. Um, but then, you know, Eddie, Eddie started, you know, bringing me along, and, and I kind of got a sense of how he liked to call things. And, you know, when he would back out, I could jump in and start getting more comfortable with it. And then, you know, the match is over. It was a great match. Um, I didn't really know what the if there were storylines or what the storyline was, but I remember the end of that match, Cody O'Connor had been injured in the match and was pulled to the back um, and then came out and uh, ended up getting the pin. And I remember saying, you know, just completely off the top of my head, but is he medically cleared? Was he cleared? You know, so I don't know if I was stepping over storylines or if I added something to it, but, you know, I was just kind of in the moment of – you know, a wrestling fan getting to broadcast a professional wrestling match. Uh, and then the very next match that I got to do was the Micah Taylor, Mad Dog, Dan Sawyer steel cage match uh, when the underground uh, gave birth. Now, I didn't know at the time, I, and I still don't know if they had planned on bringing me back for the next show, what the underground thing was going to go, was going to be about, but uh, showed up the next show or the next show that um, we had in Jasper and Dan pretty much put the the tag of the voice of the underground on me. And ever since then, I, you know, I've been uh, the voice of the underground uh, speaking for the 
the Georgia click, I guess, has uh, been called in Alabama or whatever uh, on some of the Alabama wrestling boards. But you know, it's just it's been an opportunity. I get to that. I get to. Uh, call wrestling matches with uh, some of my good friends uh, and, and watch them progress and work and, you know, just have an absolute blast working with Eddie. Now, what were your or who were your biggest influences uh, when you first got into the business or right before you got into the business saying that you wanted to be in radio broadcasting? Um, as far as radio broadcasting goes, um there was a local guy in uh, who worked for KNBR uh, in San Francisco, which is the San Francisco Giant flagship station. Uh, his name was Bob Fitzgerald, um, and he used to run a show called Sports Phone sixty eight uh, from eight to midnight, and it was just you know essentially a call in show. And I'd call in every now and then. Um, and right about the time I got into college, I decided that I wanted to get in you know pursue a career in radio. And um, was lucky enough to get an internship at KMBR and, you know, kind of got to, to work with Bob a little bit. And, um, you know, I don't know how many people follow Sports Talk Radio, but uh, a man who is considered to be the grandfather of, of uh, Sports Talk Radio, Pete Franklin. Um, and at the time, you know, I'm a huge San Francisco Giants baseball fan, so I've always been a fan of John Miller, uh, Hank, Greenwald, Hank Greenwald, uh, Ron Fairley, you know, the guys that called it the games in the late eighties, early nineties, and even up to today. So, you know, most of my influences are West coast. Surprisingly enough, um, I didn't really have any wrestling, um, influences, people that I wanted to, wanted to, to be like, if I were to broadcast, if, if, if there was one person that would be an influence it actually would be, um, you know, Howard Finkel would probably be the one influence in the wrestling business. And the reason I say that is, you know, as, as a young kid, you know, 12, 13 years old, you do stupid stuff with your friends, you backyard wrestling or whatever. Well, backyard wrestling wasn't good enough for me. So I had a couple of mattresses in my garage and a stuff, you know, stuffed a pair of sweats and sweatshirt and tied it up. And I had my own wrestling dummy and everything. And I beat the living shit out of that for like hours, three, four hours a night. But it wasn't just about the wrestling. I would actually do Howard Finkel introductions of the guy I was wrestling and whatever bullshit character I came up with, you know. So it's 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 kind of been weird that, you know, as a ring announcer, the one guy that I've always wanted to aspire to and aspire to be, I got an opportunity to do his job, so to speak. Now, with that being said, uh, you have been kind of on the forefront of, of everything with GCW, you and Eddie. Uh, tell us, if you will, the craziest thing that's happened with Eddie there. Oh, God. Uh, the craziest thing that's happened with Eddie. Um, usually when Eddie blacks out in the middle of a match, uh, that's usually crazy. And, and you can kind of tell when, when he's uh, – <laughs> not fully in control of his faculties because he he'll he'll start talking some really really silly stuff um and you know i i kind of have fun with it too you know and that that kind of where my heel pers uh, persona comes in too because he can say something completely ridiculous and try to get a laugh and i can you know what the hell are you talking about eddie you know and just kind of turn it back on him so you know it's Ed, Eddie's a character. He he just you know he does his own thing. He says what you know he says what he wants. I say what I want. Uh, nothing that we say is is scripted or pre planned or thought about. You know it's and you know, we've said it before on GCW Radio that um, you know one of the things that we like to do is try to see which one of us can get the other person to crack first. Eddie, anything you'd like to ask, Mister Guinness? Uh, I don't know about the ass part, but I can say this. Normally, when I'm delirious, I make more sense than I do when I'm fully coherent. When I'm fully coherent, that's when the stupid shit comes out. <laughs> okay, so I have it backward. Yeah. Uh, once again, I didn't get the memo. <laughs> You know, and that's one thing that um, I'm going to add to not necessarily ask a question, but, you know, a lot of teams have notes and bullet points and everything. And Wicked, you've called right along with us in a three-man combination behind the microphone. And you know for fact that everything that we do, you've had a chance to see. The only thing we have is the match order. We know who's going to go win, and that's it. Um, everything we do is completely off the cuff. Like he said, it's totally organic. 
Um, we say the first thing that pops into our head in addition to try to do justice to the action that's in the ring. But, I mean, I'll say this, and this is not me kissing ass or schmoozing anybody in any way, shape, or form, but when you have action in the ring like we are blessed to have and be able to, and to be able to call that action, regardless of whether it's singles, tag, um, men's, women's, whether it's with or without a manager at ringside, you know, we've had some great stars, whether they be the hometown crew, whether they be one shot wonders or somebody who's come in for a couple of shows, we've had some really great action to be able to call. And I think that makes our job that much easier because the fun from what is going on in the ring is infectious to us. And we're able to take that one step further and try to elevate it on our side of the board, on our side of the microphones and help it be that much more fun for everybody who's watching and listening. Okay. I asked for a question and you gave me that. Okay. Then yeah, Tasha, t- Tasha, any questions for Ted? Oh yeah. I have a question since he said to, Two things that just go hand in hand with controversy. Bill DeMott, who I actually respect, despite all of the douchebags that insult him because he believes in calling out crap from professional wrestling. Ted, did you ever witness any of the supposed harassment and destruction of WWE developmental crap by Bill DeMott while your time, while you had your time in Deep South? No, uh, and the reason for that is the only time I was ever at Deep, Sh- Deep South was uh, for TV tapings. Um, and, you know, when I got in there, you know, everyone was pretty much doing their thing, going over matches. You know, I, I, I there's been a couple of times where Bill was, um, I guess Bill was just being Bill. And, you know, if, if you haven't, for people that haven't had the uh, distinct pleasure of meeting Bill DeMott, there are times where he will just just rib you and rib you and rib you until you crack. Um, and I've seen him do that to a couple people. I've seen, you know, he did that to me a lot. Um, but you know, it's, it's just part of the business. So I never really, I never really took it as, uh, demeaning or insulting. Um, he, there were, there were a couple of, inc- there was one incident that sticks out in my mind, um, as far as, uh, how he reacted to me in certain situations. Um, there was one day where we, there was a developmental wrestler by the name of Tommy Swade. Um, and apparently they were, um, working on changing his gimmick. He had done something in OVW and changed his gimmick and was going to wear a hood and some, you know, weird contacts and everything. Um, and when I got the run sheet, the run sheet said, you know, suede versus so-and-so, which, uh, you know, was not uncommon for Jody Hamilton. He liked to, you know, abbreviate things as much as possible, make things easy. So, you know, we didn't have a pre-show production meeting. No, you know, no information came my way when it came time to introduce him. I introduced him as Tommy Swade, and then he comes out through the curtain in this mask and weird contacts, and I'm sitting there going, "Okay, that's a different look." Well, I go back to sit over after the ring introductions. I go back to sit over in my chair, and Bill's behind the curtain, whispering, screaming at me to get my ass into his office, and he gets me in his office, and he reams my ass for about five minutes about, you know, we're repackaging this guy and da, 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 da. And you fucked it up because da, 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 da. And I looked at him and I was like, you know what, Bill, no one told me anything about repackaging anybody. Nobody gave me any heads up. We didn't have our pre-production meeting because you didn't want to have it. Now you're going to scream at me when we have a show going on, you can do this shit yourself. And I turned and I was ready to walk out right then and there. And, you know, he, I don't know how he convinced me to stay, but um, I guess I, maybe it was I was just trying to do the professional thing and, and just finish out the night and everything. And then later on toward intermission, he apologized and, you know, uh, understood my point of view. But, you know, if he flew off the handle at me over something that um, he chose not to do, I'm not going to say that that some of the stuff that was talked about during training happened or didn't happen. But I would tend to believe that. You know, some of the things that have been bandied about about the way that, you know, his training style and his personality and, and especially playing favorites, which I did see a little bit um, even, you know, on show days, there is a kernel. There is a kernel of truth to it. How much it is true, I can't say for certain, uh, but I, I think that there is there is definitely some kernel of truth. OK, thank you. <laughs> Matt, I, I, I'll give you my opinion after listening to everything because 
I was trained, as far as the favorites, I train too, and I definitely have my favorites. It's called calling out. If you know somebody's a pussy, you get rid of them, and you do it by any means necessary. I just wanted to hear it from somebody who hasn't been been named as, oh, he was mean to me, you know, because I've seen some of the comments on Twitter, even from people from GCW, saying, oh, Bill was mean to me, he was vicious, he played favorites. That's always going to happen in professional wrestling. I'm into actual harassment, and uh, I-, I just wanted to hear what somebody else had to say that was there. Yeah, and now don't get me wrong. I mean, I have I have a certain amount of respect for Bill. I don't have as much as I did, um, you know, working for Deep South. It's and and after you know being around him outside of the Deep South, there, there's been things about you know the way he does business that I'm not particularly fond of. But that's him, and that's the way he that's his business. And event, you know, overall, he's the one that's going to have to deal with the repercussions on the way that he does things. Um, I respect him to a point, but there are things about him that I just I don't respect. And you know, that that's pretty much all I have to say about Bill. He, you know, he he was he was a minor footnote in my career. Matt, anything you'd like to ask Ted before we uh, for the head final out? time on to be determined on TNT Radio. Don't know <laughs> how many types of fish can you name? Oh shit. <laughs> uh... Other than the ones that I eat, probably not that many. No. Try. Let's see. Flounder, red snapper, orange roughy, tuna. Uh, the shark a fish? I don't know. Yes. If, if, if that counts. Okay, sharks, uh, swordfish, marlins, uh, crappy catfish. That's about all. And bass. Okay, there you go. You're definitely up there with cue ball call, Michael. Cool. He forgot salmon. How the hell do you forget salmon? Because I don't eat salmon. Oh, Lord have mercy. Ted, before we let you go, how can everyone get in touch with you, sir? And what do you have upcoming? Uh, best thing, best way to get in touch with me is just on Twitter. It's at Ted Guinness. Uh, two N's, two S's. If you can't figure out how to spell Guinness, go to a liquor store and look at a fucking bottle. <laughs> it's not that hard, but you would be surprised at how many people misspell my name. So um, just at Ted Guinness on Twitter. Um, and upcoming, um, you know, January 26th is my final GCW show. I believe uh, January 5th, January 26th. Um, and then uh, in the beginning of March, I am relocating to Boise freaking Idaho. Oh, um, so yeah, you never, you never know what, what's going to happen. I mean, st- I've been kicking around the idea of starting my own promotion, uh, looking around and seeing what promotions are out there and trying to hook on. Um, and even sending in demo tapes to WWE and TNA just to see what they say, because, you know, the worst thing they can do is, uh, say, no, you suck, fuck off and don't bother with, bother us again. So, you know, who knows the sky's the limit. It's, uh, it's kind of a a blank slate and that's just, that's the way I like it. And ladies and gentlemen, that has been Ted Guinness. Ted, thank you so much for coming on. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to take our last full was our last hour Top of the hour break right here on the To Be Determined show on TNT-Radio.net. Wow, man, Eddie Eddie Lane's a prick. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) welcome back to the the To Be Determined show right here on TNT-Radio.net. Now, we have asked this question on Twitter, and we will go ahead and ask everyone right now. Uh, you can put in your candidates for match of the year in the chat room or contact one of us on Twitter at Wicked Nemesis, at Fast Eddie Lane, at Words from Prism, at Tasha Simone NWA, and let us know. But we're asking, what is your match of the year for 2012? But while we let you all think about that, we're going to go ahead and Kick this motherfucker into high gear. It's that time. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is Tasha Knows Best. Tasha, what do you know best this week? This is going to be like a wrestling card. We're starting with the curtain jerk tonight on Tasha Knows Best. I'm going to cover a myriad of topics. I'm going to try to do it fairly quickly so everybody can get the gist of what I'm about to say. And I'm probably going to piss a few people off. I'm going to start with 
I don't give a damn who you are or who gave you permission. And I called somebody out, not by name, on Facebook last week. And he was so stupid. And I'll say his initials are JP because I absolutely refuse to give him any promotion on air. Um, he and his partner used the Midnight Express's old ring music this past Friday night. I have said this before, as a matter of fact, I said it a week or two ago, be freaking original. Furthermore, don't say you're doing it to pay homage to somebody. If you are not the Midnight Express and you use their music and you can't deliver, all you're doing is insulting them. That would be like somebody using the Freebirds music and not being the Freebirds. Don't say it's complimenting your idol. Don't say they said you could use it. I don't give a damn if they said you could use it. You want to pay homage to the great tag teams? Be as great as you can as a tag team wrestler. That's how you show them respect. Same person, different subject, and you very seldom hear me say anything that would come even close to breaking kayfabe. The great and wonderful thing about being a professional wrestler and being a classy veteran as a professional wrestler is being able to take a green grass piece of shit kid who is just learning to wrestle and make him look like a million bucks. When you go in the ring and beat the kid's ass and show that all he can do is not be as good as you, not only have you made the kid look bad, not only have you made the match look bad, but ultimately you've shown that you too are a green grass knight piece of shit who has no business in the professional wrestling ring and you need to take your ass back to training and get your ass whipped. Now, that I have that out of my system, and in case anybody missed it, there is a post on Facebook, and the young man with the initials of JP did. Nobody would have known who I was talking about had he not defended himself. So if you want to know who I'm talking about, just go to my Facebook page. And it's right there where he absolutely said, thanks for trying to bury me. And in saying, thanks for trying to bury me, he, of course, buried himself. Moving right along, everybody hears me every week say, look at who is going to train you before you start giving them money. Person that has been on this show, no names will be mentioned because I do actually have a lot of respect for this person, has taken over training somebody more because of time constraints than anything that was coming and training with me. Same piece of shit, initials JP, look it up on my Facebook page so everybody can tell him he's a piece of shit later. In the ring with this young kid, not Kerry Awful, by the way. Kerry was in the match as well, and, and he got whooped a little. But uh, another kid who has also been training with me has since moved on to somebody else because of time constraints and locale. Also involved in the match, and let's just say he had a little magic in him. Wicked, you'll know who I'm talking about just from that statement right there. The same piece of shit dumps him over the top rope. Kid splits his hands wide open. Who takes care of the hands? His current trainer? No. Mama Tasha, even though he's not training with me anymore, is the one who closed the hand up. I gave him the choice of super glue or stitches. Of course, he had to have his vagina come out, and I had to super glue him because he didn't want to see the needle go into his hand. But we'll forgive him for that little indiscretion. Moral to the story is, kiddies, it's not all just about learning the wrestling moves and how to bump. You have to learn respect, and you need to work with who's going to take care of you. Now, I'm going to take a breath for a minute and let you all digest that and make some comments, and then I'll move on to my really controversial subject. Well, I know exactly who you're talking about, and you and I have discussed this uh, guy before, somebody who thinks that they're better than what they are, but yet you put him in a locker room with any veteran as what happened at NWA main event and then make him change in the very, very back with the greenhorns, no matter how long you've been in the business. It's about respect. Respect is earned, not just given. And uh, exactly. with that being said, uh, this guy – is one of those people that somebody you, you somebody has you'd have to whip his ass. 
You have to whip these guys' ass and then punk them out yep. and show them – because they think they're an alpha dog because nobody's really done anything. We have to police ourselves. You and I have talked about it. Cue ball car. Michael's talked about it. Uh, several people uh -oh. have talked about it. You and I sit in our soapbox. Every week we talk about this. Policing the business ourselves, policing our own locker rooms. I think that's what it falls back to. And I think I know where you're about to go with this next uh, – with, with your next controversy. Oh, yes. Has, has anybody else got anything to say? Because this next one's going to be a whopper, and I'm going to get heat from hell. And guess what? I righteously don't give a rat's ass. Yes, vagina and super glue. Go ahead. Hang on just a minute. What? Uh oh, there we go. She's getting I fired don't up. I'm on them right now. I'm on the phone. I mean, the, the radio. But thank you very much. Sorry, had a child in the room. Okay, uh, not that she hasn't heard this. <laughs> now, I hope everybody is sitting down tight in their chairs, and I hope they strap themselves in really good because it's fixing to get really, really touchy around here. Everybody knows that I am very supportive of the NWA. For the last three or four years, I have pretty much wrestled, eat, sleep, Breathe everything else that I could do in WA. I do absolutely still believe in the NWA. I do not believe it has any integrity now. I do believe that can be saved. I absolutely believe that it can be saved. But I have said before, vision means nothing without direction and substance. If you have no substance with a vision, if you have no true direction with it, it's nothing but words. And words mean absolutely nothing until you put effort behind them. Two weeks, back-to-back -back weekends, the 15th and the 22nd, in the state of Florida, the two most important, wait a minute, I won't even say the two most important, I'll ask, what are the two most important titles in the NWA? For China and Superglue. The women's title and the heavyweight and super glue. The women's title and the heavyweight title, of course. The Especially Padu the women's title. The Paducah Horseshoe title and the minis title. In two weeks, back-to-back -back weekends, December 15th and December 22nd, Merry fucking Christmas, NWA. The two titles that are supposed to mean the most to this wonderful, great company that I have to stress, still means something to me, even if it doesn't to anybody else anymore, has been destroyed. They have been made to look like the same pieces of leather and steel that you can buy on high spots. It happened at Ring Warriors, formerly NWA Ring Warriors, on December 15th, when Casey Carlisle, the women's Say it. Belt holder. I can't say champion because she's not a champion, and I am saying that out loud, and I'm fixing to tell you why. I'm not even going to go for she was doing what she was told. I'm busting it all out right now because I don't give a shit. I'm really pissed because I busted my ass with that belt to make it respectable again, and it's been given no, no direction and no respect since she got her hands on it, and I do blame her because she's the one with it, and she's the one who has the right to say yes or no. She was booked for ring warriors. They had bombshells and bells or whatever the hell it was, some kind of goofy diva sound and shit. But anyway, they had it. She was scheduled to wrestle La Rosa Negra, who is their champion for their organization. It was to have been a women's world title match. At the last minute, Howard Brody tells her, we are no longer in WA. You have a choice. You can take that plane ticket and fly home, or you can wrestle my champion for her belt. She had the choice to do something to make the NWA continue to look good to keep that belt respectable, to make it something more than leather and metal. She lowered herself, in my opinion, to no more than a customs wrestler 
because she chose a payday over honor and integrity. At no time did she contact Chris Ronquillo or Bruce Tharp to say, what should I do? She also has my number as a mentor. She never at any time called me and said, Tasha, what would you do in this situation? Because I can tell you what I would have done. I would have told the promoter to go fuck himself, and I would have put a knife to the throat to make sure I got my money. Instead, she got in the ring with La Rosa Negra, and as the NWA women's belt holder, got pinned clean one, two, three. Yep, you're exactly right. Uh, anybody say, and then after that, uh, Howard Brody gets on the microphone and tells everybody. And here's my thing: uh, uh, wasn't Fred there? Because I believe he said that Fred Rubinson actually actually ref that night. Did he not? That was at Florida Underground right. Wrestling. That was at Florida Underground. Yes, that was the following. No, Fred did. Fred did referee at Ring Warriors. Oh, and if you look at the video, he absolutely he says it. did. And if you look at the video, he was not in official NWA referee attire. He was in a black and white striped shirt. He was not there in the capacity of an NWA official. I stand corrected. I just remember the video that I watched. He was not even announced as Fred Richards. He was announced by three names. And then and then Howard takes upon himself at the end of the video to announce that they appreciate everything the NWA has done. And he said that Fred Rubenstein worked the show tonight. He actually and they take the applause. He called Fred that by three correct. names. And I also yes. want to point out to everyone, and I'm not, and I'm, I'm just going to say I'm not pointing fingers at anybody at this point. I'm saying that everybody needs to look at all of the facts before they make a judgment. Howard Brody is a former president of the NWA. Mm -hmm. I want to make that very clear. Do I think what was handled was handled appropriately? No. But I don't blame Brody. (laughs) As far as the women's title goes... I directly blame, and I hope somebody tells her I said it because I really don't give a rat's ass. I put all of the blame for what happened with the women's belt on Casey Carlisle because she is the champion. As a champion, you were put in a situation to make snap decisions. You are the one who has to stand up for the integrity, the respect, and the honor not only of the title you hold, but the company you represent in professional wrestling as a whole. She had the choice of flying home cost-free and not getting paid. I would have got paid. I just want to stress that because I could not have to start. Eddie, you got some to say, have. She doesn't have a set to do that. However, she could. I would have gone home without money, before I would have disrespected and dishonored the traditions that that belt holds. And she chose to take the payday, which I think as a professional wrestler and a former world champion, cheapened her and it cheapened the belt and it made it worthless. No, here's here's my part on that. This is my take, and, and I'm not stepping anybody's toes, Tasha. Uh, me, personally, I put the blame on Fred. Because if, if I'm that big an official, as soon as he tells me we're no longer part of the NWA, which we'd already known, it had already been kind of made public. Uh-huh. As soon as he put that title, as soon as he said we're going to have Casey Russell Negro, who gives a shit, a low boco, whatever. La Rosa as, soon Negro. As, that ha- as soon as that happened, I just said, hell fucking no. Why am I going to have my champion wrestle for your piece of shit fucking title? There's one women's title. That's my, that's my opinion. And had I been but there... But here's the thing. But here's the thing. The minute it became a non-NWA company, she was no longer booked for an NWA company. They are allowed to take bookings outside of the NWA. Now, 
So it was out of his hands. It became her choice. It was put to her. This is your choice. And for every choice we make in life, there are consequences. The consequences tend to have a ripple effect sometimes. And this is a huge, huge ripple effect. Now, I will go into the next part of the ripple if anybody doesn't have anything else to add about this, because the next one is even bigger. Anybody got anything to say? Because I do not. Actually, is the next ripple going to be the following week? Oh, yep. yes, it is. Okay, then I'm going to hold on that part, but I'm going to say this part. Number one, we had this part of the discussion a couple of, um, I believe, a week ago on this very broadcast on the To Be Determined show. The one thing that I can, the only thing that I can say is that she's not you. Now, understand this perspective. I'm not defending her in any capacity, especially due to the fact if she, if Fred Richards was there, the chief official for the National Wrestling Alliance, not even in his shirt, but if he was there, unless otherwise publicly decried, he would be a representative of the National Wrestling Alliance, regardless of whether or not Howard Brody is backed out of the NWA. It's Fred Richards, the chief official's responsibility to look out for the champions of the National Wrestling Alliance or the belt holders in the National Wrestling Alliance. Regardless. Only on an NWA sanctioned event. I'll argue You're that. Two very important key factors to what I've said. Okay, you have to remember this one, though. Regardless of where you are and what you're doing, I've had this discussion with people before, even in the little Facebook forums. When you are in a public scenario, he could be standing ringside at a WWE event and he is still a representative of the National Wrestling Alliance unless otherwise decried because he can be recognized in that capacity, physically, visibly recognized. So I fault him if he was supposed to be her entourage and this happened, and he knew about it, and he didn't come to her and say, blow the match off, go ahead and go, take the flight back up. That's his fault. Okay, let me stress again, because you're missing two very key, important factors and elements to okay. what I just said. He was there. Right. He was not in an official NWA referee attire. He was not there in the capacity of an NWA official. If Donald Trump shaves his head bald, is he not Donald Trump? Casey was given the choice. And made the wrong one. He was given the choice. And not just by Mr. Brody. That's her fault for not calling. That's her not for. That's her fault for not walking out. I remember a scenario where you, when you were holding the NWA World Women's Championship, were offered a um, were offered a match at NWA Phoenix through Max Vitelli to cha um, to take on his champion. It wasn't a case of his champion challenging for the NWA Women's World Title. You were supposed to be challenging his champion at that point in time. Why would you challenge for a belt that's a, um, that's a step actually more than a step down because of how new NWA Phoenix? was at this point in time Casey Carlisle should have had the presence of mind to remember the simple fact that I'm the National Wrestling Alliance Women's World Champion I am holding their belt I am representing that company if Brody comes to her and says we're no longer an NWA promotion regardless unless the payday is just oh my god it's that freaking phenomenal you it walk out you've got a you've got a pay, paid plane ticket home Leave, go, buy, see ya. Because as that champion, we've had this discussion too, and we're on the, we're all on the same page. You hold that championship. You are the belt holder. You are a representative of that company, regardless of where you go and what you do. And your number one priority is to maintain the integrity and the value of that championship, of that belt. Because if you start compromising that for a quick payday, the rabbit hole runs pretty damn deep. Tosh? 
That is absolutely correct. And as I said, as the champion, we have to make choices. We have to speak up for ourselves. There is no handbook that comes and says this is how to be a champion. You make phone calls. I have you talk to people. I've said it a million, 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 million times before. A lot of people have stolen the line and used it over and over again. A belt doesn't make the champion. The champion makes the belt. And furthermore, champions cannot be made or molded. They are born. And Casey has proven that. And the next ripple? Go for it. The next ripple, following weekend, the 22nd of December, Saturday before Christmas. Also in Florida, which seems to be the death for the NWA champions right now. Champion Tokyo Monster Cahagas, who is supposed to be a martial arts badass, is booked in a match for NWA Underground, um, in Florida Underground. Florida Underground Wrestling, FEW. Against Bruce Santee, who happens to be the grand champion for... Da -da 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 -da. Ring Warriors. It was also overlooked for the NWA Heavyweight World Heavyweight Title Tournament that Cahagas, by the way, was not even an entrant in. He was a last minute entrant. Mm -hmm. So he was completely snubbed. And of course, Ring Warriors is one of the oldest and longest running promotions within the NWA structure as it were now. They get in the ring. Cahagas starts getting a little stiff with Bruce. And I'm just going to tell you the morals of this story before I even get to the end of it. If you're going to pick a fight with somebody, and I teach my students this, you better make damn sure that you're the biggest, baddest dog in the fight. Not only did Cahagas get his ass manhandled, and he did repeatedly, not just once, repeatedly got his ass manhandled. He showed that the biggest part of his arsenal is a chop, and he is not Watson McDaniel, Ric Flair, or I think King Parsons. I'm just going to say that. He got his ass manhandled repeatedly, was actually held down for at least a 10 count at one point. The referee being a friend of Cahagas refused to make the count. Now, this is being purported as a fan cam hmm. and has since been privatized, but you can still get to the video online. You can watch it yourself. This spilled over into the locker room. Again, Cahagas tried to bow up on Bruce Santee. If you have already got your ass manhandled and been made to look like a bitch when you are defending the NWA world title, learn when to shut your fucking mouth before you get bitched out again. Because everybody's seen the video. It doesn't matter that it got privatized. Everybody that needed to see it that could have or should have respect for the NWA no longer has respect for their champions. Because in two weeks, back-to-back -back weekends, the women's title was made to look like shit and punked out. And then the men's world title, which is the most important world title in the world, the NWA World Heavyweight title, a belt that Harley Race carries, a belt that Ric Flair and Dusty Rhodes and both of the Funk Brothers and both of the Briscoe brothers, men who truly laid their blood, sweat, and tears down on the road that we call the path of professional wrestling to build and make relevant and make important and make respected, was thrown into a fucking burning pit and made to look like shit. Because our world champion wanted to grow a set, but his balls hadn't dropped yet, and he got his ass manhandled, which made him look like a bitch. Now we have a world champion that is a bitch. 
And that's exactly what it looked like, because he tried to pick a fight with a dog that he couldn't whip. Plain, period, and simple. And he should have known Bruce Santini wasn't going to lay down for him to begin with. He could have gone in that ring and been classy and handled himself and had a match, but instead he tried to pick a fight. And trying to pick a fight, and I don't know why he did it, he just did it. Instead of making the belt look wonderful by picking a fight with the wrong dog in the yard, he just made himself look bad. Now, that's nothing to say about him personally. All of the views that I'm expressing right now are 100% professional. I am, have, and will always back the NWA. But right now, the vision has no substance. The NWA should rest squarely on the shoulders of its world champions. And right now, all that's left of them is their heads sticking out of the sand. So there's not much left to rest the integrity and the pride and the respect of a company who says, our traditions build legends. Well, in two weeks, we have shown that our world champion traditions are now be pumped out and made to look like a bitch. Well, we're about to take our last break of the evening. When we come back, we'll finish this, this discussion, and we will talk about the 2012 match of the year right here on the To Be Determined show. Now, before the break, we were discussing what happened in Florida with the NWA Women and Men's World Champions back-to-back. Eddie, there's something you would like to say, sir. Yeah. Um... Kick back, strap yourself in. This is going to be the fastest four minutes in radio history, kids. Number one, Florida Underground Wrestling. I don't care if you want to call it a fan cam. I call bullshit. Um, plain and simple. A fan does not get backstage behind the curtain. I don't care how much hullabaloo there's going on at any point in time during a show, any kind of a breakdown, Broadway, shoot, fight, street, fight. It doesn't matter. There's no way that a fan cam got backstage. It's been privatized now. whoop de damn to do Guess what? I downloaded it from YouTube. Thank you, Real Player. So I've got a copy for posterity so I know exactly who slugged who and when. Um, Tasha, you were making the reference to Cahagas trying to go, trying to, I'm um, trying to, <clears throat> sorry, Wes and sorry, Mark Briscoe, trying to man up about it. He really didn't look like he was trying too hard. And for Santee to yell, you better lay down. I told you to lay down. I'm sorry. That shows a lack of class on his part. So all in all, this overall perspective, the gimmick from Florida, this whole situation in Florida underground wrestling. No longer an NWA promotion. That's fine. That's great. That's wonderful. That's their business. No, mo- I thought Florida Underground was still with them. Uh, they, I've looked on their website, and I didn't see, unless they've changed it back, but I don't see Florida Underground as being part of the NWA right now. I may be wrong, but there may have been a change up. But the day, the, when I looked after that, I didn't see the NWA logo. It may be back up there, mm-hmm. but, but I didn't see it. But. The one thing that was prevalent to me in the early part of that match was Santee screaming, I told you to lay down. It's like, Uh okay, so who's goading who in this situation? Santee's a hell of a competitor. Cahagas is a good competitor. Plain and simple, regardless of the overall circumstance, respect has to be shown, and I don't care if the overall circumstance comes into play that Cahagas was the one that was wrong or Santee was the one that was wrong or there was a conspiracy all the way across the board from, um, from the Sunshine State. There's some things that don't need to be, and there's going to be a shoot fight somewhere down the road. Somebody's going to screw something up and occasionally you're going to have this happen. But as far as it goes right now, uh, uh, like I said, my number one thing, there is an integrity to this sport, this business and this industry. Somebody, yes, I said those two words, shot, drink. The fact of the matter is when we destroy it from within because of our own egos, that is the biggest crime against professional wrestling. And for a veteran to do it, that part is inexcusable. I expect it out of Rooks. I expect it out of Greens. And I can expect it out of disgruntled ex-employees. 
But the fact of the matter is, if you're looked up to as a veteran in this sport and in this industry, and you start trying to pull this shit, I'm sorry, plain and simple, you are just as guilty of everybody else as far as destroying the integrity that a lot of us are busting our asses to try to protect in this business. So right now, the Sunshine State got one hell of a black eye, in my opinion. And I think with that being said, anybody would like to add anything to this? Okay, well... Now, uh, we've asked about uh, your match of the year for 2012, and we've actually had a few people send theirs in. Eddie, did you get a chance to think about your match of the year? Austin Aries, Bobby Roode from Destination X. That's a pretty good one. Uh, JMT says Daniel Brown versus CM Punk from Over the Limit, and El Generico versus Sarah Del Rey from Chikara in April. Yes. Both very good matches. Not often you get to see a Man versus woman match, make it there. So, good stuff, good stuff. I want, I now, want to see uh, Tasha Simone versus Wicked Nemesis. Oh. What? <laughs> okay, uh, my match of the year, of course, uh, we talked about this last week, is uh, Tasha against Pandora for the NWA Women's World Championship in September. Okay. 58 minutes. 58 minutes. Uh, a brutal match, and I will put that match up against anything that has, that has went on for the last year or so. So, But with that being said, uh, we want to know you guys, match of the year. Matt Denton, you still on the line? Yep. <clears throat> I have three matches of the year. One is Santa Claus versus Al- Alberto Del Rio's car. Second oh. one is Corey Smark Rage versus Diabetes. <laughs> and the third one is CM Punk versus John Cena from uh, Night of Champions. Cool. <laughs> this science totally isn't awkward. <laughs> Tasha? <laughs> <laughs> Tasha, come on in. <laughs> I have my my match of the year candidate is first, second, and third with me, and I very seldom push my own matches this much, but I dare anybody to do what Pandora and I did. Can't be done. I will put it up against the seven levels of hate bullshit. I will put it up against any other match in the NWA this year, and I'm saying that with all of the respect in the world to Kevin Douglas all the respect in the world to him. As far as I'm concerned, that is the and only match of the year candidate. I wasn't there for the second one. I was there for the first one. And I will tell you this, um, the one from early this year, um, Tasha Simone versus Pandora, that was an, that should be a match of the year candidate in anybody's book. Like I said, I didn't see the second one. I saw the first one. And the one word that kept popping out of my mouth more often than not was damn, <laughs> <laughs> well, the second one was um, made the first one look like playground stuff. Holy nutbag. Oh, excuse me. Holy butternuts. Okay. Oh, Lord have mercy. Wick, where you at, man? <laughs> I'm right here. Go with it, man. <laughs> but, ladies and gentlemen, it, it's been a heck of a ride, so we're going to take the last 17 minutes to talk about uh, our favorite moments uh, from TNT. Matt, your favorite moment from TNT. Hmm. That's a tough one. Hmm. Come back to me. Tasha, your favorite moment. My favorite moment, and we're still doing this, is voting for Matt Denton and Matt Maskless for PWI Top <laughs> 500 1 and 2. So people remember that. Start sending in your votes to PWI right now. Mad Dog Matt Denton, number one. Matt Maskers, number two. If they do not hold these positions, I will find you, I will hunt you down, and I will pile drive your asses. Eddie, your favorite moment. <sighs> I'll be honest, dude. I've had a ton of moments that I've really enjoyed either A, watching, or B, being a part of. For me to try to narrow it down, I know that I would do a disservice to somebody in some situation 
So I'm just going to respectfully say 2012 was one hell of a year. And if I don't see nominations for Wicked Nemesis as ma- as manager of the year, better yet, manager of the decade, there's something wrong in this freaking industry. Oh, Lord. My, my favorite moment was actually when Tasha uh, – Started to go off on Casey whenever we were interviewing her and just hung up. I love that. I thought that was great. <laughs> ooh, ooh, there we go. Favorite moment from TNT Radio was um, actually hanging up on Jim Mills and having him and his little butt buddy on Facebook go, Boycott the station! Boycott! That yes, that mean- was pretty funny. That was great. For, for those that don't know, uh, Casey had a stalker that would follow her around and call into all her shows. We were told that he actually got to uh, fill in for a show, so he would actually try to take over the interview. And, of course, Matt and I were like, nobody's taking over the interview from us. But as soon as he called in, he just started, and we, Matt hung up on him. And, of course, the rest is history. He asked for a boycott from us, or for us, I guess. But, you know, that's just how it goes. You win some. And you lose some. So, but it, it's been a heck of a ride. And we'd like to take the time to thank everybody mm-hmm. that has been Hold there. on. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you actually got the email, but I got an, an email from Stan maybe about two weeks ago, which I haven't forwarded to you. But um, apparently Bobby Johnson from the Universal Takeover Network has, um, has a bunch of awards coming up. And for the best podcast... The To Be Determined show has been nominated. So. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. Yay. Yay. Yeah, you, should yeah. be, uh, you should be proud of yourself because you are the driving force behind the show. Yeah, I don't give a shit, to be honest with you guys. <laughs> you, know, you know, I could care fucking less about awards. Uh, what's an award to somebody that's, that's going to be eternal? I've got a legacy. I could give a two fucking shits about any award. So don't even worry about giving us the podcast award because we don't fucking want it. All you fucking marks out there can take it and jam it up your fucking dick holes all for all I give shit. Or the, whole, or, the, or, or, the, or the hole where the girls pee. So there you go. I don't care. When we started this, it was just to educate, and if we even smartened up one individual, which I know we've smartened up several individuals, and I know a lot of our uh, colleagues in the wrestling business listen to us, uh, we've enlightened, we've educated, and we've definitely pissed off a lot of people. Hmm. So I could give it two shits. We only average about 50, 60 listeners uh, each week. You know, we have people that listen to the podcast, we have people that download it, we have people that check out the YouTubes when they're uploaded. That's that's all good and dandy, but it was never about how many listeners we had. We're not one of those ones. Oh, we have so many listeners, we don't give a shit. Okay, it was never about listeners. It was about educating, and we have went out of our way to educate. And I know we have enlightened uh, several people. Actually, so scratch that. that. I just website. checked their website. They've apparently removed us from the uh, from the picking. Good, fantastic, awesome. A bunch of cunts. Fuck them. <laughs> Hey, Tasha, you got your about Christmas wish. He said the word. <laughs> I know, right? Ding, ding, oh, ding, 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 I ding. Have to do this. I have to do this one more time for Wicked because even though he didn't say it, I know it was one of his favorite moments of the year. Beating Paul When I ass. kept repeatedly saying vagina. <laughs> Super cool <and> vagina. <laughs> it worked. Holy shit, Dust. <laughs> Oh, and for the stupid dipshit in the fucking chat rooms, like, oh, no listeners, then how are you, who are you educating? Fuck you, you faggot. We educate who the fuck we want to, and I don't give a fucking shit about any of you, except for the <laughs> listeners we have on a regular basis, because those are the ones that and we And we love try. them. We truly love them, but we don't give a shit about, uh, about gaining listeners or whatever. We have that core following, and for all of you that have driven across the United States to listen to us, we thank you. For those of you that have taken time from your college education, we thank you. For those of you that just want to put one in the air and listen to us, yes, and I'm talking to you, air sign, we thank you. For all of you, we do thank you, and we do appreciate it. But you know what? It goes as it goes, and so it goes. Tasha, how can everyone get in touch with you, and what do you have upcoming, ma'am? Um, January 5th, we return to Lebanon, Tennessee for NWA Top Rope. We also have a benefit scheduled January 26th. 
Um, also in Lebanon, Tennessee, for one of the local high school wrestling teams, which I'm really excited about because some of the guys are going to have matches as well as the professional wrestling. Um, Tennessee does have a new NWA promotion, NWA Saw, and you can see them if you have Comcast in the Nashville area. You can see them every Sunday night at 10 p.m. Everybody can reach me for booking information, Tasha Simone, NWA, at gmail.com. And, of course, you can still hear my rants and raves at Tasha Simone, NWA, on Twitter. Matt Denton, how can everyone get in touch with you, sir? And do you have anything upcoming? I have nothing upcoming. I have a, a Twitter account at Words from Prism. You'll find everything about me there. So, yeah. And fuck the Ultimate Takeover Network, too. Cunts. Ultimate Nutsack Network. Uh, Eddie, <laughs> how can everyone get in touch with you, and what do you have upcoming, sir? Uh, let's run this light speed. Thursday night, I'll be at Buffalo Wild Wings over in Trustful. Friday night, Buffalo Wild Wings, Alabaster. I just got the call a few minutes ago. I will be back with Mulligans over on Cahaba River Road this coming Saturday night from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., uh, spinning some of your favorite tunes and also your chance to be the star because the microphones will be open this Sunday. The broadcast double play 530 PM central 630 Eastern 330 Pacific beyond ringside is back with yours. Truly wicked nemesis and Mark Mabo Bowman on beyond ringside.com. We'll be asking about your favorite moments of 2012. And we've got some familiar voices coming back to the show. Uh, Brooks Logan has said he'll be back in Paulie Wells. will be back. Tasha Simone, the uh, multi-time NWA women's world champion will be joining us over on beyond ringside uh matt denton said he might be dropping in for a couple of minutes the master of malice mark james has um committed to uh, make an appearance on the show this weekend been a while since we've heard him on any and or possible radio show and of course sunday nights at 10 eastern 9 central global championship wrestling's gcw radio will be back you can find out more about yours truly all you got to do is drop by one website fast eddie lane l-a-y-n-e dot com True story. Joey Image ran off Brooks Logan from listening to the station, too. He would. Really? Yep. Schmutz. What a cunt. Well, you know, <laughs> hey, that's it, Matt's it word. It's nice to have a lot of people back. Uh, to to all those that listen, we're going to go ahead and take the time to those that uh, listen to us on a regular basis. Daryl B., of course. Uh, O'Hagan, friend of the show who listens quite often. Uh, to iHeart Wrestling, to Jim Diva, to Ninja Britches, uh, to Mark James, who still occasionally gets a chance to listen to us, to Airsign, to tonight JMT, who has uh, said that he would like to listen more, uh, to Wesley Pipes, to J Row, to everybody out there, to to our to our our staunch followers, for those that have consistently listened to us, we appreciate it. For those that have just come along for the ride occasionally, we appreciate you too. For those that uh, that want to have sex with pastries, we're not we're not too cool with that. Uh, I'm just saying. No. I'm not yeah. into coming in a cream filling. But I'm not. I'm not a big bullhorn fan. But uh, you can reach me at Wicked Nemesis on Twitter, Wicked Nemesis Enoch on YouTube, maybe Wicked Nemesis, I don't know, they change it so many times, uh, Wicked Nemesis Facebook fan page, Unlucky Charms fan page, and the Merchants of Death fan page. And of course, for those of you that want to know about real wrestling, make sure you go out and support it. You want to know about wrestling, you want to to know where it all starts, it starts in your backyard. Not literally your backyard, but you know. Your hometown. Around your area, around your area, your hometown. Yes, yes. Shut up, Eddie. <laughs> uh, but make sure you go out and support the local uh, the local talent, because if you're complaining about there not being any wrestling, you're probably not looking around you enough. So, but we appreciate it, ladies and gentlemen. It, it's the final broadcast here on TNT-Radio.net. We will be back. We'll be broadcasting on BeyondRingside.com. We don't know if we'll come back directly next week, if we'll take a week off to let it all sink in. You just never know. But whatever you do, go out and support your local independent wrestling. I can't say that enough. Also, New Year's Eve coming up. With New Year's Eve coming up, do not drink and drive. Have a designated driver. No, shut up. Shut up. This isn't your fucking show, Nick. That's Sorry, great. I had flashbacks. Sorry. Oh, 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 PD, <laughs> PTSD. PTSD. But uh, for all of you, we do appreciate it. Uh, Make sure you have a designated driver, please. I send Cindy and Mike. I don't know who Cindy and Mike are, but f- yeah. Hi, Cindy and Mike. I don't know. 
Okay, well, thanks. We appreciate that. Uh, Tasha, anything you'd like to say in closing, ma'am? I'm just going to reiterate what you said um, with with Christmas having just passed and with New Year's Eve coming up on Monday. Let's try to make this a very, very safe year starting out, Pete. So by all means, I get a little serious about wrestling, but lives are important too. As a mother, please make sure if you're going to drink that you do not get behind the wheel of that 2,000-pound bullet. Make sure that you have a designated driver. Yes, please, God, for the love of God, please. Uh, unless, Eddie. unless you're a certain guy from New Jersey, then please drink and drive. You've, you've no, bragged about probably, oh, he's please, probably killing on. somebody. Oh, I know. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. In <laughs> the middle of a hurricane. He did that during Sandy. It didn't do yes. anything to him. Remember? Remember? Yes. <clears throat> Here I am, Rocky, like a Herman Cain. Uh, Eddie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> your your uh, closing thoughts, I guess you want to say. I just want to say once again, it's been a hell of a 2012 um, to all the shows that I've had a chance to check out uh, over here on TNT. There's been some great entertainment to all the shows that have allowed me to be a part of the, whether it be a call in or a temporary cast mater on this one as the producer. Thank you. Once again, it's been an honor and a privilege, and we're looking forward to carrying this rocket all the way back up into the stratosphere and beyond um, every Wednesday night, 10 Eastern, 9 Central, as we make the move to beyondringside.com. Matt, closing thoughts, sir. Um, fuck Jerry Sorrentino. Fuck Joey Image. <laughs> fuck Nick Anthony. And there you go. And my closing Happy thoughts. Happy fucking New Year. Happy <laughs> cunting New Year. My closing thoughts are this. Marks should stay out of the business. Marks quit running shows. If you can't afford to pay for real talent, don't run a fucking show. If you're a Mark, be a Mark. There's a difference between marks and fans, just like there's a difference between wrestlers and workers, and a lot of people need to learn those. A lot of fans need to quit trying to be marks and quit. Just be a fan. Just be a fan. Just be yourself. If you, if you can't train, if you can't train, don't try to be part of the show. Don't try to make the show about you. If you want to go to shows, little outlaw shows where they make you part of the show, fine. But don't be a fucking piece of shit to everybody else because you don't like their work because you don't fucking know work. You know a bunch of outlaw shit where you're jacking off to a bunch of pictures of a bunch of sweaty guys. There, I said it. And that goes to a lot of fans. There's only one set of fans that can get away with naming themselves. And that's Team All You Can Eat. And they didn't even name themselves. Somebody else named them. But with that being said, thank you all so much. We appreciate it wholeheartedly. Uh, I don't know. what What's the last song we're going out on? What song are we ending this on? The one we talked about. Okay, well, we're just going to let it all go. We do appreciate everybody. Join us. End it to smack my bitch up by the prodigy. Uh, pro- uh, I can't even say the word. The <laughs> why, prodigy. Why would we want to end it to Matt smacks himself up? <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Do you hear that? It'll get us flagged on YouTube, but they got <laughs> Ground control to Major Tom. It's been ground control, everybody. Thank you. Space oddity. Ground control to Major Tom. <laughs>